looks like we're the only ones left. There's still people here. I'd like to stay in the house. Do you mind if I ask why? Because I have two boys, and that is our home. I found a road that goes underwater. Must go down to that town. What town? They flooded a bunch of towns when they dammed the river. That's why they call this Lost River. As soon as the last town was drowned, a spell was cast. Everything that's going on around here got to be for some reason. So I want to start off with Brian first. As an actor who's worked with a lot of filmmakers, did you draw influence from anyone in particular? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you learn from all, you know, kind of for better or worse, you learn from everybody that you work with, you know, and in some cases you're more influenced by what you never want to do than the things that you, you want to emulate, you mm -hmm. know? Okay. So as actors in this first film, was there anything that surprised about working with Ryan? I think uh, just, just all the drugs me. I did, right? <laughs> Come on. Just all, all the, the drugs, drugs I did, did all, yeah. all day, just yeah. nonstop. Hard Hard bring, bring, in, yeah, just... bring in the heroin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it was fun. Didn't do that. <laughs> um, I think one thing was uh, I was never, you know, I'd, I'd seen uh, Ryan's films before I met him and things, but there was never a moment that I didn't see him as. Uh, director or that he didn't look very at home in that position, um, I suppose. And also, uh, he's just... Also because I wore a t-shirt that's a director. Yeah. Where I and just, an arrow that points Yeah, yeah, off. just an arrow going. I'm with director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Megaphone. <laughs> Monocle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scarf. <laughs> so it was very obvious that you were yeah. director. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he made it obvious. Yeah. He made that very obvious. Yeah. He's yeah. using your power in a way. Yeah. I'm the director, I can do that. <laughs> so the music is very much a part of the film, and I want to know how that selection process came about, and as actors, did the music help set the scene and set the tone? Well, it started with, so, I was, so Johnny Jewell's our composer, um, I would worked with him before, and there was a, 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 over the course of a year, I was going back and forth, uh, to Detroit, just sort of filming on my own, and as I and I was kind of writing in that process, and as I was filming, I was listening to Johnny's music. So, the music really became a part of the film for me. You know, just like the landscape, the images that I was that I was shooting. You know, there's something about Johnny's music that's really, you know, he has these really threatening sort of undertones, and then there's very wildly romantic melodies, and so. And it has kind of like an 80s sensibility, and it was reminding me of the kind of 80s films that I grew up on, you know, that were influencing the movie. Like, when I sent him the script for the first time, and I hadn't told him anything about it, or that I'd been listening to his music, you know, he said, oh, Dark Goonies, you know, cool, I'm in. <laughs> so he just knew, you know, he just got the sensibility, and, and so, yeah, the music did become a really big, you know, part of it, and it was a part of the inception of it. And we played certain types of music on set as well that really kind of set the mood, I think. Exactly. From like suicide to Johnny's music to yeah, Rhythm of the Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just when we need Just it. for good measure, you got to throw in <laughs> Rhythm of the Night. Was there one song that kind of stuck with you that you kept playing over and over again to kind of keep in character? Or? Um, I don't think to stay in character, but Rhythm of the Night was a really magical moment because we were out, we were doing a night shoot and I was starting to get really tired. It was near the end of the day and uh, <laughs> Ryan was sitting behind me in the van and he just like gets his iPhone out, puts it right next to me and plays it and I was like, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> um, so I, we You were listening that. to a lot of the Shangri-Las. Shangri-Las, yeah. yeah. Sosha kind of modeled her voice after Mary Wise from the Shangri-Las, so mm. we were listening to a lot of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, it was it was Mary that um, you had sent me a few of their songs when we were just talking about the script, and then I was really fascinated with the way that she spoke. And for somebody as well that was only like sixteen, can you do, it? Can when... you do a little bit of it? No, I'm not going to do it. Watch the, the past, movie. Past, present, future. No, watch the movie. What did she say? Um, I couldn't. Remember do you remember? Uh, no. Fuck. Do you remember? <laughs> no. God no. Yes, Try to forget. Um, but she had this lovely sort of um, very mature voice for her age when she spoke, mm -hmm. and I found that really um, 
how much I am. So now when you guys see the finished product, um, remember back to when you first read the script, I'm kind of wondering, is that what you envisioned this looking like, you know, Ryan's vision, or did you see it in maybe a different way in your head? Yeah, I think so. Um, but then, it, yeah, Ryan kind of, I think the film definitely feels like he stamped his style on it quite firmly, I think. And mm. um, yeah, there is that. It's, it's strange as well because you, when we're filming it, there's it's such a big experience it was and it's so whole and we know everything that goes on yeah. and there's so much stuff that I suppose isn't in the film that there's the so way, much the footage that the we shot that isn't yeah well the story is almost larger for us you know yeah. um, so that experience is kind of an amazing thing and it's there's part of it that's almost kind of like separate from the film I suppose but it's funny I, I've said it to <laughs> Ryan and Annie and stuff as well that like when we shot it, it felt very much kind of a certain way, as Ian says. Mm. And then, but because we had shot so much, we didn't know what he was going to piece together. We always knew that he was going to kind of take everything that he had and and kind of piece it together. Then, because we shot so so much footage. But it's so and so when when I you know the lead up to the kind of release, I didn't expect it to be the way it felt because mm. we had just shot so much, and I really didn't know what you were going to take from what we did. And it felt exactly like we were back in Detroit, put me right back into that place. It was like looking at a photo album or something where it took you right back, so. Yeah. And they said there's a lot of footage that didn't get used for this film. So I'm wondering, is there more footage of Ben Mendelsohn dancing anywhere? <laughs> because if you played it for like 10 minutes, that would be an awesome music video or something. That seems to be the note yeah. from the screening last night. It was like, can we get, can, can Ben Mendelsohn's dancing be twice as long? It can be like three times as long. I, was, I know. I mean like, I was dying because he's so good at what he does. And I didn't know he was going to do it either. So when he kind of came in, he just brought an iPad, he pressed play, and he said, roll. And so started, that was all improvising. Get any he tips started out. killing it. And, and we were just, I mean. Classic Ben. Classic Ben. What did he say last night? Remember someone asked that question? He was like, sometimes you just got to shake your stuff or something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone's got to do the shimmy shimmy out. Yeah. <laughs> and was it hard getting Christina in the shell? I won't explain what it is, obviously. So, it's, you know, people she has a little know, claustrophobia. So is. it was, uh, but it worked. You know, I mean, I think it, it kind of helped her uh, in the scene. So when you were researching for Lost River, I'm kind of curious because you, I feel like you almost have to be there to be in the scene and you know experience what's going on. So were you able to look back, maybe you know, do some research, and it goes for you guys too, researching the parts. Or did you have to actually be there to be in the moment? I, I feel like so much of, uh, of, of what's sort of special about the movie sort of came from, came from Detroit, came from the environment, came from the people around us that were helping us. You know, there's an amazing energy there right now. As much as there's a lot of, you know, devastation in certain na neighborhoods, there's also this whole um, sort of rebirth happening and reinvention and and uh, you know it started like attracting people who kind of want to you know can sort of create their own reality and we drew a lot from the people around us and we just met so many interesting people like there was a, a, a guy that became so helpful to us named Joel Landy who had bought five blocks or something and built a train that went all around it and, and then put, is putting movie theaters in schools and we were showing our dailies in those theaters and it just became like a very immersive <clears throat> place where like it was kind of feeding the film. You know, a lot of people from the neighborhoods came and became part of the movie and, and, our, and I have great, great scenes in the film. And, mm. and there was their job, which was really hard to mm. incorporate these sort of strangers into the narrative and pull them into the scene right. and sort of make it not Detroit, but Lost River. And I was, I was so impressed that they were able to do that. It's like acting without a net, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Thank you. Or like a net with a big hole in the middle of it. Wow, they don't need to know <laughs> that. It's not. No holes. That's not talk about it. So <laughs> <laughs> the way I speak through Kristen Wiig, yeah, you do that I do. with your face. I do. Monkey. <laughs> this is one like, last quick wrap up question. Um, I watch a lot of horror movies, and as I was watching the film, <laughs> I kind of saw certain scenes in there that would reflect what I would see in a horror movie. So I'm kind of curious if you drew any inspiration from any genre films or if you guys felt like you were in a horror movie at times? When we were walking through that kitchen behind the roller rink and it was pitch black and oh, you yeah. just had a little torch or something, mm. that felt a bit horror-esque. Yeah. 
And that's well, it felt more like a fairy tale than anything. Like the water scenes where you're on the raft yeah. and it's just you alone. Yeah, that there. bit did actually. Remember, we filmed that. We filmed that. Yeah. Some of that in a swim, half of that in, like a, in a swimming pool, like a diving pool. Mm-hmm. That bit did especially, yeah, being underwater and things in the dark. The club that um, Christina Hendricks' character works at is based on the Grand Grignon, which is, which if you're a horror fan, you Absolutely. know. But that's it's a, for those who don't know, it's a, a theater where kind of horror move, you know, horror theater started. Mm-hmm. And so there, there definitely is like a, that that element, the aesthetic, yeah. and that, and that aesthetic. Why would you steal from Billy? He's trouble. He'll hurt you. Hey, you better run your ass! What's keeping you here? Me, and my mom. Frankie. Is that what's keeping you here? Everybody's looking for a better life somewhere. Hey, want to ride home? What if something happened? We get to leave tomorrow. Would you come? 